It's the third and final part of our impromptu concept art series and today we're going to take everything that we've looked at in the last two episodes and put them together while also taking it a step further. So far we've worked on some pretty out there crazy characters and that's been loads of fun but today I want to see if we can rein it in just a little bit and take a look at a slightly more believable character. Still a fantasy dark vibe but maybe a little bit more functional as a character. Our focus today is going to be silhouettes more specifically using costumes to create fun and interesting silhouettes while also maintaining story. And most of all, we're gonna see if we can try and subvert some expectations by putting together two art styles that don't necessarily go together very often. It's gonna be an interesting one. If you're excited to dive into more concept art today, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and put notifications on because next week we're doing a very interesting style study. Not to be dramatic, but this one was pretty much ordained by the gods. You can always come say hello on Instagram, Discord and Kara and check out my Patreon for more exclusive rewards every single week. Alrighty, let's go ahead and finish up this impromptu concept art mini-series. Alright, this started as a vague scribble that I really, really like the idea of. Today I want to work on a priest slash priestess sort of character, but in a fantasy sense. My focus today, like I said, is on the silhouette. I started by first taking a picture of the scribbles in my sketchbook and importing it into Critter and then tracing over it with slightly cleaner lines. I really like the idea that their arms are perpetually wrapped in that big outer cloak thing, kind of implying that their actions don't affect the physical world at all, but they are simply there to connect to the spiritual world. And to just break up the silhouette a little bit, I made the underskirt flowy and pleated, but it's still way too many big shapes, especially with that outer cloak that is just one big tube. Very big, very flat shapes will make your design feel too boring and monotonous. We certainly need to break it up with smaller ones. So maybe we give this cloak a sash of some sort, like a little belt and then a long piece of fabric that hangs down the front. And maybe to show that this isn't just a regular priest character, that they actually have magic, we add some floating candles and a floating incense holder. You guys, I'm about to expose my dad right now. My dad bought so much incense off of two separate internet marketplaces, and now our house is just all incense smoke. It's a little wild, but you know what they say, art imitates life. So. Here we are. <laughs> I added a couple more small details and that's our first concept. It's all right so far, but I think we can do better. For the second version, I want to tweak the silhouette so it feels a little more detailed at the edges. If we were to block in the original silhouette of just the character, it is essentially just two large shapes and that isn't recognizable or inspiring. So for the second iteration, I decided to maybe just cut out a giant chunk from either side of that outer cloak. That gives us a nice little break in the silhouette, but then it also offers us a couple of design opportunities. First off, we've essentially got four leading lines that lead to the same point. Maybe we could put some sort of symbol or emblem right there. The other great opportunity is to show some skin. Usually, at least in our world, priests and priestesses are covered all the way up. I thought having a little bit of extra skin showing would be a nice departure from our human fate systems. Maybe this character comes from a world where flesh isn't inherently sinful? I also really wanted to experiment with the head a little more. Perhaps this version doesn't wear a tall hat, but has a high ponytail instead. This looked pretty good so far, I really liked the direction in which we were headed, but felt like there was one more version in there that might be the key. So we make another copy, this time we're going to tweak the second version and see what happens. 
I didn't quite love the idea of the face and the hair showing quite so much because the character felt a little too accessible, if that makes sense. I want this character to feel untouchable, quite literally a holier than thou type of deal. Like, what if they don't even look with their eyes? What if they're so tuned into like the astral realm that they just walk by faith, not by sight? Maybe that outer cloak has like this collar that I, I think it's a variation on the Medici collar. Okay, okay, this works. Let's just enlarge this concept and work on hashing out the details. I really, really like the shape of that super high collar. Figured we could layer it a little. Repetitive shapes are always just the easiest way to create detail without taking away from the overall shape language. Plus, I thought that center emblem thing can be surrounded by like a cross. Maybe this is some sort of post-apocalyptic outer space religion that still has its roots in current human beliefs. Now, here is where we step out of our comfort zone. <laughs> Gotta create some props. I know I want an incense holder with lots of detail, but this is where I thought, hmm, what if we switched up the genres a little bit? What if, along with the cool high fantasy stuff, we throw in a little bit of steampunk? I told you, this is far out of my comfort zone, but that is exactly why we're doing this exercise. So while there's pretty ornate shapes around the edges of the incense holder, I thought maybe the bottom tray where it actually burns could have the super cool gears that you see in steampunk concepts. And hey, maybe that exact design could be the emblem on the character's waist as well. Maybe it has some sort of spiritual significance to this faith. Bits of that could be our significant design element. Yeah, this is coming together very nicely. Finally, let's get the floating candles in. I thought maybe it's not necessarily the candles that float, but their holder. Maybe this character has some sort of magic that makes specific steampunk objects move at their command. I just did a basic studded ring, maybe a glass window underneath it, and of course a tiny little repeated shape from our emblem design. We'll put gold and jewels in it, it's gonna look really cool. Okay, okay, this is looking really good, let's get into render time. I actually started with some super rough scribbles to try and decide on positioning for the character and the other elements. And then, because we want to work smarter and not harder, I just pasted in the lines from our concept sheet. Why reinvent the wheel, right? <laughs> I think I want the incense holder to be a little tilted as if it's in motion, kind of like it would be if you were walking around holding it on a chain, if that makes sense. The candle I needed to reposition because I wanted to balance them out. It's kind of hard to decide on placement when it's not a whole entire scene, so that was definitely a big struggle. And in a bid to, again, work smarter rather than harder, I just pasted in some gears that someone else has designed <laughs> instead of hand drawing the shapes myself. We can render them all to look metallic, but for now, I just want some silhouette shapes. And now we paint. For the palette, I specifically did not want too many vivid colours, just some greys, blacks and whites. However, I know the steampunk bit needs to be like old gold, so maybe we'll have some purple to offset some of that warmth as well. Also, for like 99% of the rendering, all I used were the airbrush and my magic brush, i.e. a hard edge round brush with pressure opacity settings. Again, we're keeping the lighting pretty basic, as we have done all month, just your standard overhead key light. The render process was just as usual, though I gotta be honest, it felt a little bit less exciting than doing the usual super vibrant illustrations that I do. I'm sorry, I'm just not a minimalist. Mama needs lights and colors. <laughs> Maybe it's just the Bollywood in me. Some things you just can't fix, hey? <laughs> Also, again, do you guys ever feel like you watch something for the first time when you're painting and then that thing is forever linked to the painting process? I started watching The Walking Dead, yeah, I know, beyond super late, and now as I'm watching back the painting process while writing the script, 
All I can think of is Rick Grimes hobbling out of that hospital. Poor guy. Man, one thing I really, really enjoyed painting was the candle. Oh, there is just something so mesmerizing about how the colors play with each other, despite it just being a basic white candle. Oh, it's just so beautiful to paint. I loved it so much, I doubled up on the candles. <laughs> For the background, despite my deepest, deepest desires, I decided again to keep it super simple. Literally just a dark grey to light grey gradient, that's it. I feel like the smoke from the incense adds plenty detail, so we're gonna try and be good and show some restraint today, okay? <laughs> I did some floating specs, because we gotta have floating specs, and oh, this is the best concept art I've ever created, you guys. What do you think? So there we go. I certainly feel like I've leveled up a lot this month, mentally more than anything else. I love playing with like these outrageous, absurd concepts that are not my style at all, because I feel like it really opens up the creative channels. But what do you think? Has this month kind of pushed you to explore more in your concept art? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and learned something today, please remember to like and subscribe to my channel for more art content every week. And make sure you have your notifications on because like I said, we're doing a very fun style study next week and you need to know when it drops. Come say hello on Instagram, Discord and Kara. And if you like what I do and would like to support my work and also grab exclusive content every single week, such as all of my speed paints from start to finish, my custom brush kit, and also prints of my work every few months, it is all up on my Patreon and your support on there allows me to create this content for YouTube and it means the whole world to me. So I'll leave a link up here in the cards and in the description below and thank you so much for checking it out. Alrighty you guys, that's about everything for this video, so thank you so so much for hanging out with me. I really hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Last week we took a look at an absurd fantasy character thing, where we really looked at exploring the relationship between characters through concepting. There was a lot to learn and I really think you'll enjoy it, so if you missed it, I'll leave that video here in the outro. You will definitely enjoy it, so check it out and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye!